welcome to Seeing Through Glass and welcome to my Ferrari 360. No, it has not been sold. Loads of you have thought it's either burnt down in a blaze of glory or I'd put it up for sale, but neither. It has just been resting up over the winter, ready for supercar season, which I am saying starts today because I am on my way to Supercar Driver's secret meet. In my mind, this always marks the beginning of the sort of spring and summer supercar season. If you don't know Supercar Driver, they are a supercar driver's club based here in the UK. They do events all around Europe. And this is perhaps their most impressive. They gather pretty much all of their members, plus some sort of additional VIPs, and park up and do an incredible photo on a runway in the middle of England. So yes, I'm in the 360. It feels like the right time to bring this car out of hibernation and display it. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. It's not all smooth running when you take a car like this out of hibernation. Um, I am constantly running with an engine warning light on at the moment. Um, now, I have invested in an OBD reader, like a diagnostics tool. It cost me like nine pounds off Amazon. I can plug it into the car and it tells me or gives me the error codes from the engine warning light. I then immediately send them to the awesome guys at AV Engineering who either tell me, stop driving the car or don't worry, it's just being Italian. I have codenamed this car Luigi. Luigi the 360 because it definitely has a personality of a slightly mad Italian man who likes to just light up like a Christmas tree for no particular reason. Anyway, I've got about a two hour drive ahead of me before I get to the supercar driver event. I'm hoping that I'm gonna make it there. Wish me luck, off we go. Interesting development. I just pulled over to get some cash out, but also because I wanted to reset the engine light. And the way to do that is by turning the battery off at the main, which is in the boot. So I shut the boot and I'm now back to start up, but the boot release is an electronic boot release down here because the battery's off. Can't do anything and I cannot remember. There must be a manual boot release somewhere. Switch or lever, there, there has to be. But I can't remember where it is. And at the minute, the car won't even turn on because the battery's disconnected. So, time to hit Google. <laughs> Phew! <laughs> that was a very worrying moment for a second. All part of living with a Italian car, poor AV engineering. I just text them endlessly. I just text Harvey there, being like, Harvey, any way to open the uh, the bonnet when the uh, battery's disconnected? He must think I'm an absolute idiot. Right, now let's see. That may or may not have cleared the engine light. Um, yesterday, with my OBD reader, it was telling me it was something to do with fuel and emissions. And apparently, a common issue with this car is the fuel cap. Yeah, engine light off. We'll see if it stays off for the rest of the journey. But yeah, apparently if the fuel cap isn't really tight, a little bit of air or whatever escapes and it flags up as a sensor failure or misreading. Anyway, right. <laughs> I think I'm now set to get moving once again. Oh, that's part of the fun. Luigi, you joker. Right, things haven't exactly gone to plan. You now join me in the car park of a Halfords because Luigi is really deciding to uh, play up today. Uh, on the motorway, uh, I started to notice this quite weird noise coming from the underside of the car and I assumed maybe a plastic bag or a branch or something had got stuck because every time we changed lanes it just sounded like something was getting caught on the cat's eyes in the road. So I pulled over, had a look and somehow the entire tray under my car has come loose, has broken off its bolts and is now hanging down on the left hand side. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is a very fixable job. I've spoken to the guys at AV Engineering. Um, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm somewhere near Leicester. I've stopped at three garages now, including a quick fit, um, and none of them are able to help, either because they're closing or they don't have the right parts or they're too nervous to touch a Ferrari. So, the guys at AV said that I should be able to do this by myself. Now, I am the least mechanically minded person in the world. I am useless. But anyway, they said that if I can find the various parts required, I should be able to do a bit of a botch it job and kind of fix everything back in place. So that's why I'm at Halfords. I'm gonna try and find the parts needed and see if I can somehow fix the underside of my car, drive it back to London and then get it to AV Engineering for a proper repair. What a fail. Right, so here we go. This is the kit that I'm gonna be attempting to do this job with. We've got a socket wrench, 
uh, 10 mil socket and some big washers. The plan being that supposedly I can loosen off the original bolts that are in there, put some big washers on it, put them back through the tray and pin it all in place. It's very much a botch it job, but we're gonna give it a go. So I think I have lost some bolts as well as the actual tray coming loose. Hard to tell completely, but okay, let's yeah, more shopping, more shopping required, bolts necessary. So, this is the screw I'm now going to attempt to plug in the holes where the screws fell out. Wish me luck. I think I've done it. More, I mean, that's not even, I haven't got much grease on my hands. I was hoping, I think I've done it, but. Let me grab the camera. Essentially, it actually turned out to be a lot of an easier fix than I thought. You're not going to be able to see it because the camera's not picking up on focus, but there were two bolts back here and here. That had, this one had snapped off entirely and this one had come loose. And with uh, a bit of a Halfords job, I've tightened it all up and you can see it's no longer dragging. Now, it needs a better fix than that. But for now, these guys, no, no ad, no hashtag ad have saved me in the 360. It needs to go into AV engineering just to be checked up, but I can drive it, woohoo! The life of a 360 owner. This is definitely what you would call an adventure. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of myself. I know everyone's gonna laugh and go, freaking hell, here he is. Not got a clue what he's doing with cars. Thinks by screwing the floor of a 360 back on, he's a, a mechanic genius. I realize I'm not, but, but as I say, for me, this has definitely been the most hands-on I've ever been with a car. Embarrassing, I know but you've got to do these things when you own a 15 year old Ferrari. Right, I now need to assess whether I can actually still make it to the supercar driver event because I am three hours late. Um, I think first I need a coffee just to recover from this entire experience. Let's see if the car turns on. One, two, three, check okay. And we have action. Do I have an engine light? Oh, I've got to check engine light. Oh! <laughs> Somehow, I have made it. The car is not on fire. It is here, it is parked up. Three hours late. I think the photo's already happening. There's an insane range of cars lurking on ever. There's some mad, I think it's a Project 7 F-Type that just is just sounding incredible. I need to find people, I need to find cars. <laughs> Mr. Keen Bean, Tony from Gravelwood, came up here at about 4 a.m. this morning. He was so excited for this event. Lovely to see the Huracan, very nice Alpha. I mean, there's almost too many, there are too many cars to show you here. I'm not gonna point out everything because there are about 300 plus. Oh, oh, gloss dark green. Hello? Is that the same colour as my Cayman? It might be on that DBS. Another nice Performante VAR F-Type. Oh, it just continues forever. Let's see, I can always see F50, Koenigsegg, Zonda, 177, Vulcan, FXX, Enzo, F50 again, another Koenigsegg, a Veyron. I mean, this is just, this lineup is always insanity. 675RT, Bowler Defender, got Project 7. Oh my god, got the Eagle Speed Stone. Look at this thing. Wow, that is stunning. Two E types flanking it. Uh, got another Morgan, Ariel Atom, Caterham. There's that Koenigsegg and Veyron I just mentioned. XJ220, very nice 720S. We got a Performante. I don't know what this Lotus is, but it's incredible. Much Lago SV, Aventador SV. 918, F12 TDF, 599 GTO, this is just ongoing. Daytona, Speciale, with a very recognisable number plate. 488 press car, we have got an R8 GT and an Arash. So that is what they call the VVIP lineup. A few cars still waiting to cruise in here now. You can see all the cars we parked up with, still there, I need to come out here. But they do the VIP stuff first on what a lineup it is. I feel a bit bad because last year I arrived with about five minutes to go. And this year I've arrived with about two minutes to go, but I'm here, I'm here. Um, and yeah, just blown away. <laughs> Here 
he is here in the queue, so excited. Where's my spot? Mate, why aren't you in the VIP section? What I don't happened? Know. What, what happened? I thought you were SCD VIP. Yeah. Go on, launch it, launch it. No. Launch it! No. I have seen this number plate before. It should be mine when I buy a McLaren F1, but for now. I'll allow it to be on this thing, Chris Roadster's stunning. There's that GT3 I pointed out earlier. All the cars now are slowly making their way onto the main runway. There is so much to get out. These are very nice, these two V12 Vantages. I've uh, got a beautiful F12 cruising through. This man here has a 360 Spider with a Capristo level one, so he's trolling me. <laughs> I want to go and look at this though. I don't know if you can see it all the way in the distance. Uh, a blue Mercedes AMG GTR. And if you listen to the podcast, Tony and I are obsessed with that car at the moment. Pull on, this R8 is very nice. Actually, it's green crew as well going on with that GBS. But yeah, it's like a satin chrome green. Bit of a rip off Archie Hamilton, but very nice. Yeah, my time to see if the 360 is going to start and I can join this massive queue to get on the runway. Oh, here he is. Today did not turn out the way I expected it to, but it's been awesome in one way or another. I've learned something about my car, learned how to fix my car. Still managed to make it to this incredible event. Cars are still accelerating behind me, so you're going to hear some pretty amazing sounds going on. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> this has probably been the worst day or the most challenging day of the Ferrari 360 ownership experience. It's an R8 giving it some, but somehow I still fucking love it. Um, it hasn't at all made me question why I bought that car. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, hope you guys have enjoyed the update, give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.